Bring him from the yard. This is Don the Diecast Pirate. Today I have for you a red line restoration of the Maxi Taxi. Let's get it up on the turntable and take a look at it. Alright, so as you can see it's heavily kid painted. Uh, I'm not sure what condition that glass is under the paint. We'll figure that out. Um, if I need to I can rescue one from another vehicle. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. Um, not sure how well these red lines are going to clean up. I do have some reproduction wheels that we can put on this if we need to. And I had the decals for it in the paint already. So a uh, little bit of history on the Maxi Taxi. Um, some of you may know, I think I've told a few people in the past, when I was a kid the Maxi Taxi was like my first Hot Wheels car ever. And... I think I got like four cars all at one time for Christmas that year. So the Maxi Taxi was one. And I think the uh, Ramblin' Wrecker was another one. can't remember what the others are. Um, but I had come to the age of being able to have die cast. Just right after the end of the Redline era. So I never had cars with red lines. Um... So my maxi taxi was a black wall. Now, one year ago, on February 9th, I released my first Redline restoration video on this on this channel, and that was the Ramblin' Wrecker. So to celebrate the one year anniversary of my YouTube channel and 600 subscribers, because we're at 5.99 right at this moment. Uh, I decided to do the Maxi Taxi because I've been wanting to do this for a while and also in addition to being the first uh, Hot Wheels car that I ever owned um, it's really what got me started into die cast in 2019 I still had my original cars from when I was a kid up until 2012 when we had a house fire and I lost him in that. So, 2019, I'm not exactly sure what started it. I knew my birthday was coming up, and I was thinking about my die cast and missing them. I wish I still had them. And I looked up Maxi Taxis on eBay, and I was like, oh, okay. It's all stuff on eBay. And I, so I started buying die cast cars <laughs> in. Uh, you know, and realized that cars that were in not as good condition went for less money and thought, well, I'm a handy guy, you know. And I used to kid paint my cars when I was a kid, obviously, you know. So I started looking up breadline or looking up restoration videos of diecast, and that's what started me on this road was the Maxi Taxi. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, let's uh, get it taken apart and see what we're working with. Alright, so I just got it drilled. Let's take it apart and see what's going on in here. If I can, that back's coming loose real easy. The front, not so much. Let's see what we can get from this side. There we go. I found a, a spider web. Imagine that. So we get the. <laughs> there's the interior. Uh, looks like the the back corner of the glass broke off. There's those tabs on there. Now this glass 
I noticed it before I took the before um, so it's pressed down in the back and it's cracked there and it's cracked right in the front I don't know if that's going to show up on camera or not but, you know so I am going to borrow a glass out of another car um, but yeah and there's the body you can see that original yellow paint inside so get these posts prepped and drilled and tapped and uh, get this cleaned up uh, now these I said these original wheels even if I can clean these up they got a lot of play wear on them and you could probably put something on there but you might see if there's a better option okay so the fronts look pretty good um, and that's the difference between the originals and the reproductions you can tell the centers look a little bit different and I think they're made that way on purpose so they you know by looking at them that they're not original um, and I'm okay with that on this uh, and then there's the the back ones so we'll use those on this and obviously I will get as I said another glass out of here we'll get this interior cleaned up oh that broke the tab off of that all right so um, uh, when we put the back wheels in <clears throat> I'll have to carefully glue that axle in because the tab broke off of that base. So, all right. <clears throat> this has a build up of kid paint on it too. So, I'll put this. Hmm. Well, we'll see. I'll, put the, I'll probably put that in the ultrasonic cleaner um, and that stuff I have in there it's the super strength mean green uh, I'm sure that's going to remove all the chrome and since this is an actual restoration we'll be using the Molotov to re-chrome the entire base so we'll take a look at doing that when we get back with that I'll get these stuff uh, all taken care of off camera and then we'll come back for the next step. So, upon further review of the play, uh, before I actually go and get this cleaned up, I just tapped the posts, drilled and tapped the posts, and was putting this base back on. I might use this base in the future on a custom, because one of these is broken off of the base. This is the donor card that I used the glass from and I thought well I'll get another glass and replace it and now looking at this since that is broken uh, this base is in much better condition and while these red line wheels do show play wear, I think these would be better suited for what we're doing here. So I think we're just going to take this base and use on this car. And this one will go back over to here. And maybe sometime in the future we'll use this one for a custom. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, So yeah, I think that's that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna take this.
base here and use on this one. We'll touch up the chrome with the Molotov and we'll use these original red line wheels on it. So I think that's going to work out really good for that. Uh, wasn't my intention to get a donor base, but hey. <laughs> you roll with it. You, you do what the car tells you to. I mean, the car is telling me that when I do this restoration that I want it to be as original as possible and that's why we're going to use an original glass from another car we're going to use an original base from another car that's not broken and we're going to use the original red line wheels so I think that's a much better option and we'll still have these reproductions for other restorations in the future so alright we'll get this cleaned up and then we'll come back <laughs> I normally don't show this on camera uh, just because I'm using what I call the awesome sauce. This is the aircraft paint remover, paint stripper. And okay, that chunk just came off of there. So this is coming up pretty, pretty hard. But what I'm noticing as I'm going through these paints, especially on the hood, it was really thick, is it looks like they painted it green, blue, silver, then white. Um, and this on the hood is like the worst. The original enamel paint on the inside of the car came off right away as it normally does and I need to scrub that a little more. Uh, now I'm getting the fumes from this which is why I don't like to do this in here at the table. I like to do it in the kitchen because when I'm standing up my face is farther away from this so the fumes don't come up where I breathe. Um, so I just wanted to show you this a little bit. Uh, It's just got to, whatever paint they used on this has got to break through it. Um, now those buffing wheels that I have might take that off. I'm not sure. But I'm just going to... Continue. Now on the passenger side there, it is coming off more on the driver's side and the center of the hood. That is where it's having problems. So I'm going to take this back out to the kitchen and finish it out there. Alright. Alright, so back from the sink. The interior did clean up very nicely. Um, now there was some of that white paint that got on the back of the interior piece and I was able to just actually just take my shirt tape and rub it right off. So we will put this aside in there. Along with the screws. Okay, here's the, the glass and which obviously it came out very well. I did see a bit of a, a little bit of scuffing on there, so I'll probably give this a light polish clean again, and then we'll put it in the floor shine. The base, uh, obviously this is the base from the donor car. So there's a few places where chrome's missing. We'll get that touched up. In the meantime. Um, See if we can do something about these play worn tires. So, if I take this black Sharpie and just go over the tread part of the tire.
and I'm not going all the way around because I don't want to get it on my fingers. one that should be dry enough to touch without getting it all over and maybe a little bit got on there okay really give these a little more now. Um, and I did notice it's not going to roll, is it? Hmm. Why are you binding on me? There it goes, and now I'm getting ink all over my fingers. Yay. Um, hmm. There's like some dirt or something in this one, and it didn't clean out. When I uh, scrubbed the base, because I forgot about it. Uh, I'm wondering if. Whatever that is, we just dig in there with this pick and get out. I'll probably take this and scrub it again. Um, after that other one, that tab broke off, I'm reluctant to remove these axles. side so <clears throat> no and the red lines are really good as far as being original but there's a couple places where they're not quite as good we can just take this if I can draw in a circle follow the indent around and that just makes those red lines pop Somebody, either on Facebook or Instagram, uh, told me about this. Okay, now for the Molotov 2 millimeter. Oh, let's start back here. This is not bright shiny chrome like the original, uh, but see this this chrome's kind of yellowed a little bit. And I don't want to go over the whole base with this. So I'm just really looking to 
mirror what I did on one side. I just want to bring back what's not there, you know. Okay. I think that's gonna about do it on that. Uh, and then these centers. I know from that first set of wheels I did on there, and I'm touching the chrome now. It's brilliant, done. <laughs> um, if I get too much in there, I'll get down in those recesses on those wheels, and then I'll be fighting that. So, really, I'm just trying to. Touch the outsides there. And I'm probably not even getting this on camera. Okay. Get. I don't even know where to touch this base now. Like you can't, you can't even see what I'm doing. Um, wanted to set that way back out of the way all right so to the body um, so I think for the most part we got all that paint off there was one spot right there in the center of the hood where there's some blue paint that didn't come off and then underneath there's some bits and pieces of the yellow I think what I'm gonna do is take one of these little files and clean some of this up So in particular, right here on the trunk, that right there, <laughs> there's a little bit, that feels like metal that was sticking up that wasn't paint, there's a little bit of paint left there. Okay, and um, let's look at that window opening. Okay, now this one, a little paint left there. These castings, even if you look at this one. It's a very prominent mold line right there. I 
and I do not want to take that line away. I don't want to take that body line away, but I just want to clean it up a little bit. Just like that. And then if we look at the front. Okay. So here is right on this corner. I don't know if it's going to show right there. Uh, so I started this video at 599 subscribers and we hit 600 already. Thank you guys. I really, really, really appreciate it. Look at this big honk of metal. Sticking down there. Flash. And these diamond files make quick work of that. If I get too far off, they're just taking the part of the window opening that I don't want it to do. I just want to take this down. And then looking at right there. Just a little bit there. Okay. Oh, no, that's... Yeah, I hear you, kitty. Alright. Alright, let's break out the buffing wheel. <clears throat> okay. Now, I'm still not liking the way that is sticking down right there. the side profile of that window that does look better okay on these pillars here got this massive line right there What I'm not going to worry about is these indentations on the trunk. <clears throat> when I was a kid, I didn't know what those were for. But I now know those are part of this car's heritage. Because it started with holes in the trunk lid for a wing. Okay. 
So this, I'm not trying to polish the car, I just wanted to get it cleaned up and give it a good surface before paint. <clears throat> so I will go get this cleaned up, degreased, and ready for paint, and then we'll come back for that. Okay, so obviously I buffed it all off and everything. I went ahead and, and washed it in super hot water with some Dawn dish detergent to degrease it. Toweled off the excess water drops and put it in my air fryer at 150 degrees for 15 minutes. That gets any moisture completely dry that might be on the casting and the pits of the casting, anything like that. And then I let it cool down before I paint it. But what I also do is, where did I set that? I use the, uh, well, that's wrong. Huh. This is only 50% isopropyl alcohol. I usually use the 91%. Evidently, I didn't notice what the percentage was on that when I bought that. Uh, some guys use acetone to wipe down the casting before paint but the main thing is to get it completely oil and grease free before you paint it a completely clean casting okay so <clears throat> hmm. I'll have to see about getting some I don't I don't think I have any acetone which is like nail polish remover um <clears throat> But, evidently, I'm going to go ahead and use this 50% stuff because it's what I have. But I'll be looking into getting some more of the 91%. So it's pure alcohol. It dries quicker. But I'm going to let this sit while I uh, mix up the paint and everything. So this is the uh, yellow enamel uh, for 70s and 80s Hot Wheels from the Redline shop. Then this is the stuff that I used on the rubber duck. And that's what color this car was originally. So that's what we're going to put on it. I'm going to go ahead and get this mixed up. And then we'll come back and paint. Uh, it's a dentally. These are the only ones I can find on Amazon. Um, I got the smaller ones in the past from the Redline shop. And they do sell them at Hobby Lobby. Um, but the cost... Compared to these, uh, those are more expensive. These are a little bit different. Um, so the entire, the smaller ones, the entire length is one millimeter. These are three milliliters. Uh, and so when you're mixing this, you want to go five to one. So I would normally do like five well like seven and a half milliliters of paint on most castings and then one part hardener maybe a little more I need to see about getting some more of this actually uh, but uh, these are a little bit different when you're used to using something else but the main thing is the same so you whatever you do it's, it's five to one so Anyway, I will get this mixed up and everything off camera, and then we'll come back when we're ready for paint. Incidentally, where did I set those now? Uh, I pulled out my decals. And so here's three sets. I'm going to have six sets total because I have a lot of this car. Um, this one looks like it might be damaged some, so I'll probably cut this set out here to use um, but yeah we will come back when we're ready for paint
<clears throat> All right. So the car is in the air fryer right now drying. I'm going to go ahead and cut these decals out. All right, this is one of my originals, um, one of the better ones. I have a couple of these that are somewhat like in this condition where they have some chips and and whatnot, but they're in very good condition. So this is driver's side, that's passenger side. Um, so what I'm looking at here is this tampo actually came over and had a little bit of a curve down like the this arch went across the top and then it curved down a little bit and then it came back up so I had a little dip on the bottom side these reproductions are not exactly like that um but for a restoration, that's okay. I mean, I've noticed that a lot in a lot of the uh, reproduction parts. Uh, the guys that make them, they're not exactly as original on purpose. And so that's so when you look at them, you know it's not an original part. It's not an original tampo. It's not an original wheel. Okay. Um, and there's some people that are, you know, I don't want to say perfectionist. They're, they're all about it being absolutely 100% original and there's nothing wrong with that. I decided to start doing this so I could have nice, really good looking cars that I couldn't afford to buy in the condition from original so that's why I started doing this um, so I'm okay with this being a little bit different right I have this original car here um, and I have another one in the case but we're gonna make these go on that car so right now it's drying I have it <sighs> at 170 degrees and I only put it in for 20 minutes if it's a spectra flame I noticed the enamel seemed like it didn't fully cure on the uh, uh, rubber duck but I think what I'm going to do is actually let that sit overnight and I'll come back tomorrow and put the decals on because I'm gonna have to let it cool anyway I don't I don't put decals on while the casting still has heat in it so we'll come back when I'm ready for that I don't know if I'll show it on camera I may try to I have a bad habit of when I'm doing stuff right here I pull it closer to my face and then it's not showing in the camera and I think what I might have to start doing is actually moving this camera back so it's showing what I'm seeing here. Um, and that may work out a little bit better. Um, I don't know if I can get that. See, if I lean closer, then I'm, I'm arching my back over too much and I want to sit comfortably as I'm working on these. So we may just have to pull it out back like that. So, all right, we will come back whatever the next step may be. Okay, so 
These are not decals. These are stickers. Hmm. Yeah, these are stickers. Okay. All right. Well, better to <clears throat> think they are decals and act accordingly than to think they are stickers and run decals. All right, well, <clears throat> I will get this stuff come up, come up, cleaned up, and uh, we'll get this thing assembled, and then we'll come back for the reveal. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present to you my Maxi Taxi restored in all its glory. This car brings back so many memories of playing with my old diecast cars as a kid. I mean, <sighs> had it since I think I was five years old the first time I got diecast cars, something like that. And I had that for a a very, very long time. But let's get it up on the turntable and take a look at it. Alright, so as you can see, it's heavily kid painted. Uh, I'm not sure what condition that glass is under the paint. We'll figure that out. Um, if I need to, I can rescue one from another vehicle. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. Um, not sure how all well these red lines are going to clean up. Alright, so this is coming around here. So we took it apart, uh, cleaned it. I end up having to swap in the glass from the other car, and I end up also using the base and original red line tires from the other car as well. Uh, I have an idea for a custom on what's left of that one in the future. Maybe we'll see if we can get a reproduction glass if I don't have one already for that car. Um, that may end up being, I don't know, I'm not sure when we'll get to that. I'm thinking that might end up being a, uh, like the two year anniversary car or something like that. So I'm kind of thinking about that. So, guys, you know. As I mentioned already, uh, we hit 600 subscribers, and I really just, from the bottom of my heart, want to thank all you guys for supporting me, for supporting the channel, and all your comments, and the likes, and everything. It really, really means a lot. Uh, so, just keep it up, and uh, we'll get to 1,000 you know, before we know it, so, you know, I'm looking forward to that day whenever that happens. Uh, all right, I almost forgot. Uh, our upcoming Diecast International Builders builds February 14th. We have the Love Boat build coming up. March is the Mercedes build, any Mercedes. April is for Autism Awareness. 
May is any pickup truck, and June is any 4x4 vehicle. So you can start with a 4x4 or turn a car into a 4x4, whatever you feel like doing. Alright, so we hope you guys will join us for those, and we hope to see your builds in the future. A little bit of a story about this car. So, my original Maxi Taxi, uh, see, when I was a kid, my dad worked at railroad tracks. <laughs> Well, my dad was 16. He lied about his age and went to work for the railroad. So my subconscious linked that together. When I was a kid, he worked at racetracks. I go, there was a couple of local circle tracks he raced at, and I used to go to the races with him. And so when I would come home from being at his house every other weekend, and I would get my cars out in my maxi taxi, I pretended it was a, a race car. And not just any race car, but the best race car. Like, I could win any race anytime I wanted to type of thing. <laughs> you know, a little kid. Uh, so, what I would do is... I had uh, one of the super fast cases. Let me grab that real quick. I had a case like this. And we have, if you, you probably remember them if you're old enough, uh, the oval rugs, I'm not exactly sure what they were made of, where it had the, the different colors and whatnot. So I would take and put my case under one side of, the, of the, that area rug. So it would make like a ramp. And I'd line up however many cars. And I might be moving around and racing and everything. And I'd be running in the back in, the, in my maxi taxi. And just as we're coming around the last corner to cross the finish line, just before the, the first car gets to the finish line, I'd reach over and open the glove box and push the secret button and jump over everybody. <laughs> oh. As I got older, I you know, that sort of fantasy thing, I didn't really play with my cars in that way, but, you know, I had a vivid imagination, and, you know, I was, so many different things that I would do. How did you guys play with your cars when you were kids? You know, were you, did could your cars fly? Could they drive on walls? Or did you keep them on the ground and, and drive them around like they were, like it was real? Uh, let me know in the comments. Let me... Tell me what you think. See, I always wondered about that. So, look at look at this case. Um, you can see these these cars on here have the red lines. I guess a kid, I didn't have red lines, and I always wondered, you know, why do those why do those cars have red lines on the tires and mine don't? And I always wondered red lines on the tires, and I do. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for the first year, all the support, everything. Leave a comment down below, click that like button, ring the bell for notifications. As always, this is Don the Diecast Pirate. I'll see you next time. Yo, 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 Diecast Pirate's in the house. Let's do a red line restoration on this Maxi Taxi. Hello again, this is Don the Diecast Pirate, and today we have a Larry's Towing Tow Truck, Red Line uh, Hot Wheels, uh, that somebody decided to paint silver, and we are going to do my best to return it to its former glory. So this will be a straight up restoration, and let's see how we get there. So there you have it guys, my very first red line restoration.
I think it's a thing of beauty, even if I do say so myself. <laughs>